Welcome back, Spartans. Happy Wednesday, April 10th. Uh, first, let me begin with, I, I appreciate everyone's flexibility uh, regarding class on Monday. We had lost power and then lost internet. Uh, and I quickly found myself up, well, myself and everyone else at Simley High School uh, found ourselves up a creek with <clears throat> out the proverbial paddle. Uh, and thus, I could not Zoom with you on uh, Monday morning. But per the directions that were posted uh, in the assignments listed, you guys are supposed to go through the perspective scenarios just to give you another practice shot at uh, analyzing societal change from the theoretical perspectives. So we're going to discuss that. We'll review it. Again, your answers may not be the exact same as mine. And again, that doesn't mean that it's wrong. Uh, there's quite literally a plethora of correct possible answers. Um, so if you don't have exactly what I have, that's just fine. But it is important for you to have something down and to make sure it's turned in. So when I review those, I can double check uh, each of your comprehensions. So please make sure that does get submitted. When we're done with that, when we're done going through it, you have a video to watch. You're going to watch the movie Selma. You should be able to stream that from uh, one of your devices. And you're going to do another theoretical perspective. Uh, you'll have the rest of today, Friday, and the weekend to do it. In fact, the watching of Selma isn't due until next week, the 15th. So you should have some time to do it. And then we'll start wrapping up unit one uh, next week. Let's get down to it. So you had this grid. You had the three uh, perspectives of which to analyze societal change, and you had a scenario for each. Um, so let's begin with functional perspective. We're looking at the 1920s. A uh, majority of Americans live in cities instead of on farms. So anytime we're analyzing uh, societal change from a functionalism perspective or a functionalist perspective, we have to begin with functional integration. So it's talking about a component of society changing. And again, you could have written a bunch of things down here. You could have talked about the function of society that changed was the home. You could talk about the function of society that changed was the family, right? I mean, if you live, when people lived on farms, they had a dozen kids. Why do they have a dozen kids? Because it's free labor. Size of family, reproduction. All of these things changed. Uh, you could talk about uh, the change of Americans living in cities instead of on farms from the functional perspective. The function that could have changed would have been jobs or tra transitioning from agricultural work, farm labor work to factory work, business, corporate work. Literally could have been, could have been anything, right? So those are just some of the ideas that you could have had down. You may have something similar. You may have something different. Doesn't mean that it's wrong. Culture, our culture is going to change. What we do think and believe, values are going to change. You're living on the farm, you're probably more independent. You're more self-sufficient. That's going to change when you move to the city and live amongst millions of people. Perhaps a culture is to be more communicative, more dependent upon one another, more interactive upon one another. Perhaps there's a need for social groups, social organizations, community organizations. Literally could be anything. Power. Perhaps if we're talking about moving from the farm to the city, you're an independent farmer compared to you know now working in a factory, perhaps the power dynamic has changed and you look at it from a factory owner, management to employee worker. People could have lost power. Uh, perhaps you talked about people gaining power because they weren't dependent just on themselves. They had access to other things, other resources. They had a steady paying job. If you're a farmer and you don't get any rain, you don't have a crop. If you don't have a crop, you don't have any money. If you don't have any money, you can't do anything. But if you're working in a factory, it doesn't matter what the weather is. Perhaps you looked at it from people gained power. Social structure, again, kind of goes back to the power. It just depends on what what approach you looked at it from. Was it from a family perspective? Was it from an economic perspective? Was it from a home perspective? I don't know the answer to that. My guess is if you are working on the change in home, if you're moving from the farm or you're relatively independent to moving to the city, perhaps people move down the social structure. You had more people above you. Think city government, local government, state government, police officers, 
business owners, managers, supervisors, and then social action, what people are doing. Undoubtedly, if you're moving from the farm to the city, you're kind of on a time schedule. It's not just a matter of getting up in the morning, schlepping some feed down for the hogs, milking the cows, schlepping some, I don't know, corn out of the field, right? Where your time schedule is more, more or less sun up to sun down. If you move to the city, it's all about actual time. It's about hours being on time, moving from station A to station B on a schedule, which undoubtedly someone else controls. Again, just some things that we could have we could have uh, jotted down. 1960s, civil rights movement begin for the Black Americans. So we're going to analyze this societal change from a conflict perspective. Obviously, the conflict perspective is going to begin with the sociological uh, key concept of sociology, uh, key concept of sociology, power. Prior to the civil rights movement. Whites are group A, blacks are group B. So you could have, you could have talked about blacks trying to uh, gain more power from the whites or at least get an equitable amount of power from white people. You could have talked about social structure, right? I mean, there's no, there's no question the United States had, or, or somebody could argue still has, a caste system where typically white men are going to be on top, on top and then white women, black men, black women, and then you have the other minorities in there. Perhaps you talked about blacks moving up the social structure. Social action, civil rights movement and social action. I mean, let's see, demonstrations, protests, uh, petitioning the government for change, um, trying to spread the word about um, how blacks were being mistreated, if not across the country, specifically in the South. I mean, the whole civil rights movement, depending on what group, and if you're looking at the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, which is Martin Luther, Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King, or uh, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC, the whole, the whole modus operandi behind their movement was to get on TV, get in the newspapers, more or less be beaten by police officers, uh, community members, and not fight back. You know, the lunch counter sit-ins, having food thrown at them, poured on them, just being uh, sucker punched, demonstrations in the streets, being thrown down the street with fire uh, with uh, pressure from fire hoses, being uh, uh, mauled by police dogs, being clubbed with nightsticks and rubber hoses, wrapped in barbed wire. And they sit there and, and they sat there and they took it. They never fought back. Their social action was about trying to get people to feel sympathetic for their cause. Lots of people can have a prejudicial, a prejudicial belief about someone, but it takes a very sick individual to actually watch someone be beaten and not feel bad for them. And that's really how they changed, changed the tide in, in American history. A bunch of people said, enough, I can't watch this, this is horrible. They change their opinion. So then we go to the functional integration. What part of society has changed? This is a difficult one to do. Blacks and whites were segregated. Blacks and whites couldn't live in the same area of town, couldn't go to the same school. Blacks had less rights. Blacks couldn't vote. Blacks never got a fair trial when they went to the courts. We look at these things cumulatively together. What, what changed as a result of the civil rights movement are the laws. Civil Rights Act of 1964, Voting Rights Act of 1965, Brown versus the Board of Education, 1954, which says that black and white kids cannot be separated. Segregation, separate but equal, is inherently unequal. So the functional, the functional integration there, I would say, would be laws. The laws changed. But perhaps you look at it from a different perspective. Perhaps you talked about ending segregation. Perhaps you talked about uh, the change in philosophy, opinion, or education. Blacks are not inferior, or any other minority is not inferior to whites. 
and culture. What do what people do think and believe? Really could write anything here. Perhaps you're talked, you you talk that, you know, people people realize that this inherent uh, belief of superiority is incorrect. Perhaps the belief that segregation change is no longer okay. Really, any of those things would work. The last one is subway. All right, symbolic interaction. Again, symbolic interaction is always based on our reaction to something, a symbol. So we have to begin with social action. All right. Now, some of you are going to analyze Subway, your reaction to Subway, the logo, the image here, the symbol, uh, strictly on which restaurant you prefer. Subway, Jimmy's, John. Firehouse Subs, Jersey Mike's, Herbert's and Gerbert's, Melio's, the list just could go on and on. Perhaps you love Subway and you think it's the greatest and you don't like the other ones. Past experience, you prefer Subway over the other places. Perhaps you hate Subway and you prefer the other sandwich shops. Whatever your reaction is here, for it, against it. Perhaps you wrote indifferent. I don't have any reaction to that. Perhaps you hate sandwiches. Perhaps you find it obnoxious that we pay $13 for a sandwich. Again, all past experience. But what has changed? What function of society has changed? Well, if you prefer the other sandwich shops, the function of society that has changed is competition. For a long time, Subway was the sandwich shop. It's no longer the sandwich shop. It is one of the sandwich shops, plural. Perhaps your reaction to Subway has nothing to do with sandwiches, and it has to do with the scandal that Subway was involved with, with their spokesperson, Jared, from this would have been early 2000s. Turns out that this dude that was uh, promoting Subway because he, he ate a diet consisting of Subway because their whole modus operandi was about fresh non-processed non-greasy foods he lost a ton of weight well it turns out while he was making significant amounts of money being the spokesman for subway the dude was involved in abusing children that was off-putting to a lot of people who went to subway when that story came out and i can't remember if subway knew about it or didn't know about it but irrelevant this is during the beginning of cancel culture People were revi uh, uh, reviled by Subway. They didn't want to go there anymore. So again, a different approach, just how you, how you looked at it, right? Whatever your reaction here is going to stem from a function of society. If it's the scandal that Subway was involved in, by the time we get to the early 2000s, the American population is very concerned about past abuses of children. That's, ch that's, a change. that's a change in society. We are more attentive to making sure that our children are safe. Or perhaps you look at it from an economic competition standpoint. It's still a change of society. Culture. Perhaps it's the belief that Subway isn't good. You had a past experience of it not being good. You prefer better, uh, better options, better quality, better prices. Could have been the same. Or perhaps you wrote down, you prefer better, uh, you prefer choices. Also would have worked. Power can be a difficult one. When Subway was the only sandwich shop that existed in this country, Sub Subway had the power. They had no competition. But as a result of all of these other sandwich shops becoming available, they lost power. So you could talk about here, Subway was no longer the dominant sandwich shop. Same would go for social structure. Subway used to be at the top. Now with all the competition, or perhaps a scandal that some of you may or may not know about, Subway has moved down the social structure and other sandwich shops have moved up. Um, all right, that one gets turned in. As for your next assignment, which again, you have the rest of this week to watch, and there is no video to watch on Friday. The Zoom, yep, we'll still have a Zoom on Friday. Uh, but there will be no more instruction for this week. Uh, what you have to watch now, what you have to do for next week, Monday, 
uh, is complete the theoretical perspective analysis on the movie Selma. There is a link in the worksheet that you can watch, uh, or you can open up the video in uh, the assignment itself, and it should populate for you. Now, my guess is you are going to have to download the video to stream it smoothly so it's not constantly buffering. Otherwise, you're trying to pull the video from my Google Drive to your phone. Could be, could be slow and it could buffer a lot. So I would suggest you download it. Perhaps you download it onto your phone. Perhaps you download it on another device. That way you can have the questions opened up. All right. Um, but it is published. It is shared. I'm going to double check and make sure that you have the ability to watch it. You can see it, access with anyone on anyone with the link. So you don't even need to be logged into your school account to watch it. All right. Uh, you are going to analyze the societal change shown in the movie from two of the three perspectives. You're not doing all three. You're just going to do two. So you can analyze the societal change in the movie from a functionalism perspective, a conflict perspective, or a symbolic interaction perspective. Here's the catch, though. You have to cite information from the movie. You can't just make vague, broad statements. Blacks, whites, laws changed. Doesn't work like that. All right. The movie picks up in 1964, and the law that they are talking about is the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which basically ends the discriminatory treatment of people of color. You could also talk about a law that will be changed by the end of the movie, which President Johnson, with the, the film talks about President Johnson signing, that's the Voting Rights Act of 1965. So we gotta have specifics in our examples here, all right? Um, use people's names, use specific cities, use specific laws, use specific examples that prove that you watched the video and you just didn't haphazardly write random things down here in the, in the sheet. Okay. So that is your assignment for the rest of the week that is due on Monday. Next week, that would be the 15th. The last heads up that I need to give you this week before we go, again, Zoom on Friday, but no new instructional video, no new information. I am going to be gone on Monday and Wednesday next week. So there will be uh, no Zooms on Monday. There'll be no Zooms on Wednesday. I'll be in Phoenix with the golf team uh, on our golf trip. So you have the movie to finish for Monday. We'll start reviewing Monday and I'll have videos posted explaining what you are to do. Uh, and then next week, Wednesday, we will start our unit one project. We will not have a test this unit. We'll have a project and you'll have the better part of a week to get your unit project done uh, for that last full week of April. If you have any questions, obviously shoot me an email. But until I see you um, a full week from now, have a great day. Have a great time. Enjoy the nice weather. And until then, go Spartans.